Today we're going to talk about Kylie Rodney. She was a 16-year-old who went missing. Greg wants to tell us about the videos we're going to watch. The interview is from the All-American Dream Chaser YouTube channel. Sammy Smith organized this search that they were having, and Rodney was last seen after leaving this Prosser family campground in Truckee, California on August 6th. They finally found her body on August 21st. They initially thought foul play was underway because they found her in the back seat, but the medical examiner came out five days ago and said it was an accidental drowning. Yeah, so Kylie is one of my close friends. Uh, we met through mutual friends and we became closer in the past year to coming months recently. And she is just a light in a lot of people's lives. She's wonderful. She's, she's smiling all the time. She's caring. She's beautiful. She's there for anybody who has ever needed her. She's very outgoing. She's outdoorsy too. She loves the water. She loves to sing. Her voice is just amazing too. And <laughs> she's just a beautiful girl and we all miss her a lot. And so, yes, I was the last person to contact her after the party. And I was with her basically throughout the entire party. I was, I, um, sorry, I was no, it's okay. walking it's around okay. with her. And I, know you, I know you got a lot going on. I, I yeah. get it. There's, I'm at the team to team meetup, so there's a lot of no, kids I, outside. I, <laughs> everybody's wanting to. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so first off, just a list of positive attributes to the person who's gone missing and all in present. She is, she is, she is all positive. When we're uh, hearing from somebody who we might be suspecting is something to do with an event like this, on the whole, I certainly wouldn't be expecting a list of positive attributes and the idea of present tense. There may be some slip ups to was, there may be some slips to something negative about the person. Again, not always the case, but it might be part of a, a cluster of events, indicators that might immediately start to ring some alarm bells. However, close in the past year, she says, and there is some nostril flare there, the upper lip becomes uh, a little stiffer and the eyebrows knit a tiny bit. So there are some indicators, small indicators there of anger around close in the past year. I don't know what that's about, but it's of interest. And I'll tell you later on as we go through these, what I think that potential anger is uh, actually about. But Greg, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I love the knitting of the brow you're talking about because we're going to see it pronounced as we go through this. It's going to give us a great opportunity to teach you something that most people will miss. There's an interesting other thing here. Everybody knows I'm a big fan of eye movement. It means nothing in this video. Nothing. It's too difficult to track. I can show you a couple of places where it means something, but she is leading a search effort and people are walking all around her car. So she's looking around constantly. So you can't discernibly align her eyes to any specific thing. There are a couple of places we could make an inference, but we're not going to. So if you look at her, you look around, she's paying attention to them. I love this video too, because Mark, your point about tense. I always say we gotta be really careful when we talk about tense because it depends on education. It depends on speech patterns. It depends on all that. I, I am related to people who switch tenses casually and it means nothing. It's just an education level and where they live and, and how people around them talk. This shows why clusters are more important and why other things that matter, you get lots of ways and lots of opportunities to look at. We're going to see some red flags that mean something other than she killed this girl because we know for a fact she didn't based on what we know now. When she says she, Kylie is one of my, she closes her eyes and says, she goes on and she talks about, I'm sorry, one of my closest friends she loves. Again, she's in present tense. She's got a half nervous smile because she's partially trying to think, what should I say? We can't read minds. We're looking at symptoms and we're looking for what this person might say or what this person's trying to say with their body at the same time that their mouth is saying something else. Interestingly, among young people, most often when somebody dies, comes up missing or disappears, they're probably going to say a lot of positive. They're not going to look for the negatives. So as you get older, people may change. But when I was in high school, there was a little girl who was murdered that was in my ninth grade class. And I can still remember everybody outpouring of love for this girl. Most of these people didn't know this girl. doesn't matter. They still are going to say good things. We get a good baseline because we get cadence and mannerisms all aligned. 
And then you see a little bit of as she's multitasking, a little bit of that knitting of the brow about how she's being perceived. That's what I got. Chase, what do you have? Yeah, I agree with you all. There's comfortable here. It's uh, There's fluency of language, number one. So all we're trying to do for all four of us, what we're really trying to do is, okay, this is probably truthful. Now let me go back and take a look at how she behaves during comfortable, truthful situations and see if there's a difference there in the future. The present tense language is there. I think this is genuine recall. There's uh, not concern yet, yet for getting her back home, which is one of the thing you really try to pay attention to. I'm going to start dropping those here in the next few videos. But this is overall fluent, appears to be very honest. And uh, I very partially disagree with Greg in that, that not all of the eye contact is meaningless because I think we do see a home where she goes up and right to retrieve a whole lot of information. And I think that might be something that we're going to see a little bit later during some crucial questions uh, that are very important. Scott? Yeah, I think you're right. I think uh, Chase is talking about a baseline there. I think it's a great place for a baseline that shows the body language that indicates someone is speaking from the heart without reservation. And she's loping along. And by loping, I mean, she's almost like somebody on a horse, just kind of trotting through a field, no problems whatsoever. It's very smooth. She's young, so she's trying to get out a lot of information at the same time. Um, there are sections where she's structured what she's going to say. I think that's when you're talking about when she's look when she's looking around. You're right, Greg. There's a lot going on around her, so she's it's hard for her to lock on what's going on. Plus, you want to kind of keep an eye on what's happening uh, when you're in a surrounding like that. Um, we see when we see her looking around, she doesn't have a whole lot of concern on her face, um, but that's okay at this point because she's really not un in you know under the heat of somebody saying, did you kill this girl? Do you know what happened to her or anything like that? So I think that's okay at this point. I'm not seeing any kind of real stress whatsoever. And again, maybe we should be seeing some, but we're not. But at the same time, that's okay because I think she really thinks this girl's still alive. Um, and I'm seeing zero deception here. Everybody's wanting to talk to you. And, and like I said, I greatly appreciate every minute I have with you. Uh, yeah. Can you take a quick look at this photo? Is yeah. this what she, can you confirm whether or not she was wearing this at the night of the party? Is that what she was wearing? Yeah, so that top is exactly what I saw her in. If you can see on her left side, on her hip, you can see some skin. She was wearing a black bodysuit. I remember mm -hmm. because we went to the bathroom together, peed in the woods together a couple of times. And so that's her shirt right there. The pants were different that she wore to the party. She was wearing green Dickies pants, but that belt is definitely what she's wearing too. I remember watching her have to take it off when we were using the restroom together. We were out using the outdoor restroom is like okay. popping lot basically. So, yeah. That and, was just released from the uh, Placer County Sheriff's Office. Uh, this this picture I just found it on mm -hmm. their on their uh, Facebook page. Yeah. Um, so there's talk about this 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 uh, top the spaghetti straps top. Some people are saying it was it was found at the area is that can you confirm that or is that yeah just... so that has not been confirmed if it has not been posted on our fine kylie rodney instagram page or on the website or on the placer county sheriff's office facebook or anything then it is not true and it is not something that people should be following on or trusting the information will be posted and will be coming from us when it is confirmed so to let people know what to look out for if a changed shirt or something so yeah that has not been confirmed okay uh, if you don't know who we are, we're the Behavior Panel. And I'm Scott Rouse, I'm a body language expert and analyst, and I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. And I created the number one online body language course, Body Language Tactics with Greg Hartley. Mark? I'm Mark Bowden, I'm an expert in human behavior and body language, help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, gain credibility every time they communicate, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase. Hey, I'm Chase Hughes. I wrote the number one best-selling book in behavior profiling, influence, and persuasion. And I teach intelligence agencies and the general public in those things. Greg? Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written 10 books on body language and behavior and put together the number one body language online course, bodylanguagetactics.com with Scott Rouse. And I spend most of my time in business. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is a really good one to me because we get to see a lot of what to look for in future 
questions. This is there's no reason really for her to be hiding anything. And I, I say in here, someone who is concerned about how they are perceived doesn't talk about peeing in the woods and copping a squat. So there's no not much pretense to who she is here. She does some lip pursing after she says that minor. You have to really look. She has a little lip purse after she says that, maybe thinking, well, that sounds dumb. Why does I say that? Don't know. But there's a minor lip purse. But she has smooth breathing. Her cadence is consistent. She's got a low blink rate. We associate high blink rate, increased cadence, changes in cadence, and increased breathing with stress. And we don't see any of that. Interestingly, she does a really neat regulator in this case. When she throws her head back and her mouth opens, does an intake breath, saying, no, let me talk about that. When he says something about the shirt missing, we get a good chance to look at what's normal for her here. And we're going to say concern in her brow as she counter clarif clarifies is her normal. We'll start to see it. Start paying attention. Here's some piece of information that's wrong. And she does that in a counter clarification. And it may be cont Maybe it's just tied to how she's perceived or where, how the information is perceived. But for some reason, she does that. And lots of us do that. And we're talking to someone and they get something wrong. We go, no, no, we'll pull our brows together and do that. Um, she illustrates with her brow and she's talking about place or county, sh county sheriff's office. She illustrates with her face. She shakes her head when she means no and, and nods when she means yes as she's driving those points home. And that way you can see that this is all tied to her messaging. And it will give us a good kind of benchmark for what we want to ask and where we're going after questions. When you get to a hard question, she should answer the same way. And when she doesn't answer the same way, then we have red flags. And we'll see a couple of places later that might actually be an issue. Scott, what do you got? All right. Her cadence speeds up just a little bit and her diction is a little bit cleaner because she's trying to make specific points she wants people to understand. And this is normal since she's given that type of, of information. She wants it all to be correct and make sure everybody knows what she's talking about and is clear and clean about it. The furrowing of the, of the, furrowing of the brow indicates that she feels her, I believe, feels makes her feel like her, make, makes it look like she feels her Instagram page is, is a little bit more credible than everybody else's information or the Instagram page they've put together uh, concerning Kylie. And I'm, I'm sure she gets the information as soon as it comes out because I'm sure somebody's on the phone with them every five minutes trying to find out what's going on, which is normal for someone uh, who's that engaged and involved in, in their friend who's missing. And she's loping right along. She's talking with her descriptions and uh, with the inf information she's relaying, she's just ding, ding, just loping right along. No problems whatsoever. She's comfortable. And I think this looks the way it should look for someone who's uninvolved with the murder uh, of her friend. At this point, I'm not seeing any kind of no, no true stress as far as being um, questioned about something. I, I don't think she's hiding anything at this point. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I think I agree with you all. And she's citing the sources of information. And this happens after she has some confusion or anger here. The confusion, I think, is what we're seeing on that brow of where did this who said this? Where did this information come from? And she's going back to cite the source and, and refers back to we as the authority for it. This might look unusual to some people, but I think she's using authority of her team. And this suggests she's taking personal ownership of the issue. Her personality is most likely driven by a desire to be socially significant. So that's all I think we're actually seeing here in this clip. And if you go back and listen to how she describes her friend, that's how, how she describes it. She describes how socially significant she was to people. So I think this is one thing that she prides herself on. And as an interviewer or an interrogator, I know that if I'm seeing a person like this, not her, but I can use that to later exploit the behavior or to draw out certain behaviors that I want from that person by making them feel more or less of that desired trait. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, very clear leadership communication. Drives forward, always moves the idea forward. Uh, it's very direct. It's not d passive. It's not dismissive. It's not indirect. If I thought I was dealing with somebody who might be trying to hold back information, might be trying to conceal, might be lying in some way, I would expect something a little more passive or dismissive or indirect. She is certainly none of those things. She's so clear about what her friend was wearing. Absolute detail on that. What would I expect from somebody who's trying to be a little less indirect? Well, they can't quite remember. They're little, well, maybe this, maybe that, you know, things like that. She 
she's so clear about that even down to you know it was these it was dickie's pants not these type of pants shows i think concern in the forehead as a good generalization around bad information and where the best information can be got there's a clear idea of uh, there's bad information out there and and that's you know you should you should close yourself down to that and you should open yourself up to the good information that that me and the people that i know are bringing forward again very clear about laying down those brand names of our instagram page the local police so people know where to go there's, there's no fences and gates being put up around how to get hold of information and how to help so at the moment, no drama, clean as a whistle, though we will get a little bit of drama, quite significant drama. It was supposed to be a senior farewell party where all, all the seniors and everybody from around our area, like Tahoe and Truckee and Incline and Kings Beach were supposed to be there. They were invited there because um, it was supposed to be like saying goodbye to your favorite seniors before everybody starts going off to college because soon enough here people are going to start leaving and moving out and so Kylie's a senior or she was like she graduated early so she's considered a senior and I was a senior so every senior was initially invited to the party and as well um all grades were invited just to so that it was they could say goodbye so I had talked with Kylie and I had known she was going beforehand we hadn't planned on going together and we ended up not going together she came with her best friend Mags uh, Magda Larson, Magdalene, sorry, is her first name. Yeah, um, that's okay. Yeah, and so she came with her, drove in with her, and then um, Mags ended up leaving about 10 minutes into the party with her boyfriend, Ross, Mags's boyfriend, and um, told Kylie goodbye and everything, and they were never planning on, like, leaving together or staying together at the party. They just went to the party together because they were hanging out earlier in the day. And then... Um, I saw her the second she got there, and from that moment on, we were pretty much seen together all around the party. We would break off for mere moments from each other to go talk to other people or to go do other things, you know. But we we would always come back to each other. We were um, just going around the party. We were drinking the same drinks, being teenagers, throwing glow sticks into the party. And it started to grow really big, I would say around 10 to 10.30. It just blew up like it started to get to the point where i was getting overwhelmed and i'm a very social person i've been to a lot of these parties i've never been overwhelmed i've actually been underwhelmed but at this party it was it was very large like it was bigger than any party wow. we've had in Truckee all year and for a lot of years past there are people from what we think sacramento san francisco i remember talking to somebody who was from san francisco wow. reno Folsom areas that were just way out of reach from it and it was really overwhelming and weird to see, but I didn't really think much of it. I just thought, oh, kids are around here. They have vacation homes up here. They're just coming to party because why not? So then Kylie and I were going around taking shots and just drinking. We were trading drinks with each other. We were sharing drinks with each other. We would go back to her car to get some alcohol sometimes. And then we went to her car to charge her phone. And we were talking about... Um, just random stuff and then it's kind of hard to remember and so or no we were talking about um her texting her mom and her charging her phone and stuff and just about the party in general and then we had a few other friends in the car and then we all decided to go back to the party and we were around in there for a bit i had asked her for a ride home when we were in the car because my ride was leaving and i wanted to stay at the party longer and so then we ended up um, splitting up in the party because I went to go find another ride when we got back into the party after leaving the car so that we could um, sorry my mind is in a moment no, that's so okay. uh, no. Chase what do you got there's one moment I want to talk about in this and this is when they split up went back to the party so I could find a ride is what she says this is a strong deviation from baseline here. There's hands come up into a, almost a prayer position. They start covering the throat, which are, we tend to do unconsciously. We protect our arteries when our bodies experience fear unconsciously, naturally. 
And that happens. And there's some emotional accessing. And this is the first time we see any of that eye movement. Her eyes go down and to her right. And we typically do this when we recall emotional stuff. The story details, it's I asked her for a ride and then we split up so I could find a ride. I did not understand that. Maybe it was just teenager talk. I didn't get it. There's a loss of fluency here. So she has verbal fluency, which means she's speaking very clearly and naturally. There's a drop in fluency as this happened. And something's off. It seems maybe something happened here. It seems like regret on her face because we're not seeing deception, but a really strong spike in emotional processing that could be responsible for, for these behaviors. And I'm not totally sure, but I think there was some chin boss movement in here. If you guys saw it, please uh, talk about it. But that's all I got. Scott, what do you got? Uh, I totally agree. I, and just to pinpoint on that real quick, I think maybe <clears throat> the reason her ride changed is because maybe they got a little fuss or something in there. Not that she's afraid to talk about it, but, you know, she's it's one of her best friends, so she wants to be tied about it. I thought that was what we were seeing at that point was she was maybe had a little fuss with her or something. A little single shoulder shrug when she talks, when she's talking about every grade attendant is fine because she hasn't really thought about um, or cared about what other grades were there because he was like, oh, we're all going to be there. So I think she wasn't really sure who all was there, what type of people were there, although they were students and she knows that and we know that now. And I, I think that's where her interest in this party actually is, is in all of her friends being there at this point. And she frowns when she's discussing the, the change of plans like we were talking a second ago. And maybe she had some things planned as well before this fuss she had that she may have had. I think maybe they had together um, that they were, they were going to do all the way home or stop and do something. There were some plans, but I, I think you're right. I think something was interrupted there. And that's why we're seeing the, all the, that facial squinching and the eyes closing and all that stuff. Um, but there's really no stress that shows deception here or that she's the only thing I think we're seeing where she's hiding something is there at that point. But I don't think it's anything huge and important. Um, just that maybe something had happened between those two. Um, I don't think she's making any of this up. And, um, again, we'd assume that because there's no stress that shows that she's not showing any heating up at all at this point. And uh, when she says, I want to stay at the party longer, the left side of her mouth pulls down a little bit. So at that, right in there, I think she feels like maybe that was something she knows that doesn't sound too good. That's why she goes like that. So I would think she's under the impression her parents maybe wouldn't want her to do that or it may sound bad when she says that. But she says it anyway. And she, you know, she lets that information come out. So I think we're seeing um, honesty here. And I think she's, again, just loping right along. Everything's going smoothly. And she feels good about what she's saying. She's trying to get all the information out she possibly can. That's good for everything. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is an interesting one because we're going to see the first red flags. In in the earlier things, we saw her using this brow, this concern brow to correct and to counter. There's a couple of interesting places where she slows. Her cadence slows. She ums when she's talking about why these people were invited. Look, if you're underage, all of us were 18 once and probably doing things we were not supposed to do. And if you're trying to hide and protect somebody, you're going to have some of that with it. So I'm going to give her the benefit of a doubt there. There's a high use of illustrators when she says everybody was initially invited to the party. So she's probably telling the truth. And then when she gets to these other folks, things shift. I'm going to point out here that when we talk about baseline, baseline is not always the same. People will say, you can't possibly know this guy's baseline. Well, let me tell you that a guy sitting on his couch eating Cheetos and playing video games, his baselines can be very different than when he comes into an interrogation room. So there's a new baseline and the elevation and spikes occur in places where we see stress. So when we see something, we want to understand why in context to the situation. Calm is good. Calm is whatever it is. But She's doing a pretty good job of being thorough. It's What is interesting to me is there are places in here that mean something. When she says we were supposed to come together and we didn't, you see that furrow in the brow. Now, look, the girl is gone. If we had ridden together, then what? There's all kinds of reasons that can happen. We don't read minds. It gives me an indicator where I would poke. If I were in, in an interrogation, I were talking to this young woman, I would say, so how do you feel about that? Tell me, tell me. Did you have anything to do with this? Well, I feel like this. And you can get a lot out of people by simply opening up the opportunity for them to talk to you about how they feel about the situation. Now, before she did this thing with her brow and 
trying to set the record straight. She's probably doing it again here. So something is happening. Is there some drama around that decision not to come together? Or did something happen while they were there? Or is it just guilt? We don't know. We have to ask questions. Here is where a lot of the suspicion about this young woman came from. We got lots of people asking us to look at her. She says, we were only apart for mere moments. That's awkward wording. People don't talk that way. And it probably is something that got a lot of suspicion up about her. Don't know. I would poke on it and say, what do you mean by mere moments? That's not a word I use. Maybe she does. Maybe there's a reason. Maybe it comes from something. There's that brow again. And then she does a request for approval at when she's talking to, um, to about texting the mom. There's some concern. And then the, te- uh, the brow rising when he's asking about a couple of things in there. She rambles on about the drunken part. That's an excuse. Of course, it's probably true. And I would poke around and dig to understand. If you've ever been drunk in your life, you know that you remember things in snapshots. You don't remember sequence. You don't remember how things go together. So probably she's just telling you why. But I would poke and dig and not give her an out there. And I go back and ask about what's why are you showing this around you didn't come with her. She came with her other friend. Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So for me, all of this piece here, the drama here is about sharing responsibility, not culpability, but responsibility. Who is responsible for this person going missing? Uh, the lips ripple in aggression slightly on um, all grades were invited. OK, so this idea of like everybody was there. OK, all grades were there everybody's there then we were together we were together we were together but then it got overwhelming and i'm not normally overwhelmed but there were so many people there i'm not cognizant anymore so again the sharing of responsibility or the or the, the diminishment my responsibility was diminished because i'm now overwhelmed by how many people were there but we're all there so we can share some of that responsibility um I'm okay with her kind of loss of memory because it comes around the time where I think she's talking about, you know, we'd been drinking. And so the loss of memory is going to come from there. But just like you, Chase, I'm concerned about why the other ride. You'd gone back to the car to work out the ride and now why the other ride? Now that's going to get explained uh, later on because it does need explaining. And I think there's a, there's a, a pretty good explanation from for that but again if you weren't looking forward and you weren't taking all of this into account you're going to get some red flags going off going hang on what's going on here and you're right to have that biggest biggest deviation from baseline for me is her hair goes back behind her ears that's a big movement but in subsequent videos we're going to see her push it back again as she gets more confident so this for me means okay i'm less confident around what's going on why is she unconfident at this point i believe it's because she's said it well actually she says she says um everyone was there including her best friend the girl's best friend mags okay so she's trying to alleviate herself of any high responsibility for what's going to happen later on where you know she leaves this friend behind to an extent in her mind in in a sense of uh, she could feel guilty that she didn't take the friend home get the friend home in some way i don't think there should be any guilt there um but but you know easily you could all that i'm going to say now that's why we're getting these deviations from baseline, some underlying guilt uh, around that. Yeah, that's all I got on that one. All right. Uh, Mark, do you ever put your hair in a ponytail? No, I gave that up a long, long time ago. You should, oh, you the did. 90s, the 90s, fair play. Fair play in the 90s. These days, no. No, not at all. No, I wouldn't have told that. <laughs> uh, it gets worse. I had a perm. I had a perm in the 90s. I'm going to go on. No, don't say this. <laughs> gonna... uh, Nola in the chat wants to ask you, who was fighting at the party? Uh, the girl and guy look into them. Is there, there was, a, was there a fight at the party? Yeah, so there were some friendly fights that were going on. There was, like, we had boxing gloves. People were, like, trying to instigate. It wasn't anybody who had really any drama or... No. They weren't enemies or anything. It was more just friendly fights to keep entertainment going. This happens at a lot of our parties. We just do it to have fun. If somebody <laughs> gets hurt, like we have people on them, but 
So it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't wasn't like a fight out of anger. It was just kind of a kind of a uh, just a fun competition type of fighting. Yeah, to see Uh, who wins and who goes home with the title, which I will (laughs) randomly admit people do end up getting in fights over who won, but not this time. Daniel Taylor wants to ask you, did Kylie have All right, Chase, what do you got? The baseline behavior is back. This is honest recall and descriptions. And details are around social behavior because she remembers more social elements than someone who thinks differently than her. So this is all in her baseline. It's all there. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, interestingly enough, I said earlier, there would be a couple of places where you could call out eye movement that's reliable. Here's one of them. She does go to where I would as- associate based on everything I see in all the other videos, her recalling people she saw. And you see it. She goes kind of up and to her left. And there's no absolute. That doesn't mean everybody goes there, but she has gone there a few times. The reason I haven't pointed out all of them is because her eyes are moving around so damn much. It's difficult to keep up with. He was in Napa. Brow up. Request for approval. That's a simply a question of you get what I'm saying. He was in Napa. I think he lives in Napa. And her clarifying counter clarification happens again. That knitted brow, that down thing. And I think what she's doing here is she's going to say um, something about there's no problem with his family. And that's when you see it because she's countering what you might think. Look, this is her ex-boyfriend, but there's no problem with the family. You get it. And then you see that brow go back up. I think it's pretty good, good baseline. And we see her using that same, same exact move over and over and over. We don't see anything change in her lilting. All the baseline's good. Scott, what do you got? All right. Most often we see that hair being pulled back like that. It's when someone is, is you're talking to them and they're getting in trouble or there's something happening. Let's say it's a card game or they're, they're doing something where, they, where it's getting intense and they'll, and women quite often will do this with their hair and pull their hair back and get some, some of the heat out at that way. And I think that's what she's doing at this point. She's talking about fighting. So apparently that was a, a pretty big deal that went on because you ever, I, I've never been to parties where they're boxing. They're calling somebody out and having to, you know, putting on gloves and boxing. I've seen people, you know, go at it, but not boxing. So I think maybe that is is why she's heating up a little bit and pulling the the hair away from her face to cool down a little bit, get rid of some of that heat. I think this is great for a baseline if we re- if we really needed one. I think you're right, Chase. This is just a continuation of that. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, that you haven't been to parties with uh, boxing gloves on tells me that you are not a teenager in Truckee, Scott. If you're a teenager <laughs> in Truckee. <laughs> You'd be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be well used to it by now. Well used We're to it by now. Yeah. I mean, look, it, it seems like outsider behavior to most of us. But then, of course, all good teenage behavior should be outsider behavior. There should be some elements there. You know, yeah. uh, gosh, you know, rock and roll now is is average. So what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do to make your parents go, don't go there? Well, oh, it's probably going to be terrible, you know, uh, because because rock and roll isn't going to do it for you anymore. So look. Uh, the illustrators are back. They're really good. The baton gestures are on point. Like the, the hair comes back forward again. She's more confident. Uh, she's back to remembering and seeing things very, very clearly. Back to being in charge, which again just exacerbates for me, you know, extends for me what was happening in the last video before this. A clear deviation from baseline there around the idea of of this this other lift and 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 different arrangements being made and lots of people being there just a little bit of a story of more chaos going on which counters what we're getting here which is like well, no we're having this ordered fight <laughs> you know which which for most of it that should be the chaos well there's fighting going on you know no you know fighting going on that's actually organized and and normal so interesting bookends here for this this actual chaos of how are you getting home and this other lift so that's what we <laughs> yeah. were doing and everything uh, you, you, can you tell us about her cell phone is there is there anything specific yeah. you can tell us go ahead so it has a it's um we're having trouble remembering what color like my cell phone is a green phone but i have a orange case on it but we do know that her phone has a black case on it with a sticker on the very middle back that says sex wax on it and it's an iphone not the samsung that was found it's an iphone so it's an iphone yeah i forget which generation and which like number but i can i can post about that or something or get in contact with you okay uh real quickly laura truen wants to ask you what about pictures and social media posts there has to be 
evidence uh, this party went down. I'm sure there's yeah. gonna be people taking photos or TikToks. I'm sure there's got to be a TikTok video of the fight or something, right? There's got to be something out there. Yeah. So there's hundreds of videos. Everybody, we have videos of people taking videos. Oh, wow. We have Very good. Very hundreds good. Hundreds of videos, hundreds of pictures. Everybody, we've asked everybody to send us any videos and any pictures that they have, even if it's a picture that looks exactly like someone, something else sent us. It could have different angles. We are looking at an app called Be Real, which is where a lot of kids waited because the Be Real, it's an app where you can post a picture and there's two minutes um, at random points in the day. There's only one a day and mm -hmm. it comes as a notification will pop up on your phone that says uh, you have two minutes left to post your Be Real. Like everybody has, you can post it later in the time, but you're supposed to post it in that time. We're looking at everybody's Be Reals because we know a lot of people waited until they were at that party to post their Be Reals. So we're looking for people to look back in their snap memories of anybody that we can see in those videos, anybody that we can see in those B-reels. We are looking at Instagram posts, photos taken on video cameras, photos taken on Snapchat, videos on all of these and everything. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, there's an interesting, she raises her brow at what we do know when she's talking about the phone, but that's a, you get it. That's a, do you get it? Raising your brow, not a, hey, do you believe me? That's a, do you get what I'm talking about? And then she says, we aren't sure. One of the more interesting pieces here that would make people jump ahead and look for, for body language that's odd is she chews her lip and she does Chase's withdrawal of lip for, for, re, for reassurance. And so she's doing some discomfort show there with an adapter and with needing some reassurance. That probably is tied to the fact he's asking her about videos. Her brow goes up quickly when he says videos in a recognition thing. And so if I'm in a situation where we've been doing underage drinking and other drugs and who knows what else, who knows, then that could be com compromising and cause all the rest of that stuff. Didn't ask her a question of her about any pictures of her. Just ask about pictures in general and all of that. All I can say is I'm glad those things didn't exist when I was her age. Lots of videos of things. Most of us probably would not want those around either. I think today, even the military those phones show up in so many different places that there's no privacy anywhere you go. Then she goes back to her cadence and everything else back to baseline. She's talking like herself. She's running smoothly after she gets through that first part of the video. Then she chaffs. There's no redirect. She just chaffs. She's telling us about something that she thinks we need to know. Seems useless information to me, but of course it isn't. It's important to her. And she's trying to get across that point. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I'm happy with the detail that she's trying to give on, uh, look, you know, the phone has a cover, so I can't tell you what what the type of phone is, but I will give you that information once I get that information. That's important, is she's not obfuscating, she's not trying to put up walls and barriers. She's going, here's the data that I actually have. She's, she's very concerned, I think, when she can't be certain, and then she really kind of rolls forward and gets moving, and as, as Scott, you'd say, kind of lopes along when she's really certain about stuff. And that's a good sign, as far as I can see. Again, she takes leadership around the collecting of evidence. I think you're right, Greg. There is some concern, worry around the video. I think it could be that. I, I think also, as she kind of speeds up and starts delivering at quite a rate after that, and there's there's more, um, what's the right word? There's there's little bits of, of, of more tension in her body. I think there's a lot of information she wants to get out. And I think she maybe is starting to worry that this interviewer is not going to help her get out all the right information. So she speeds up, she starts pushing forward. Look, we've got all this video. You know, if you want collecting video, we've got video of people taking videos. So there's lots of video. We have that covered. I think she really wants to get on to some of the next stuff that she has to say and 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 needs the interviewer to move this one along. Uh, Chase, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I agree with you guys. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's genuine concern here uh, to collect as much data as possible. So far, she's not done what we typically see in a missing person case where red flags are just all over the place, which, and I'll give you a few right now directing the topics to their innocence and adding unnecessary details. So it's their innocence instead of the return of the person. Number two, stress markers, 
they appear at the moments of questions instead of the moments about the missing person, which we're, we can see stress there, but it's stress and emotion mixed together. Uh, number three, injecting some vague or ambiguous information. And she's not doing any of this. She's leaning toward the difficulty here with finding the missing person. Uh, next, we would be, we would see in a guilty person, guilt and shame behavior stronger than the emotional reactions around the missing person. And finally, one of the biggest ones is introducing and injecting complexity into the search instead of in encouraging assistance. We're seeing the opposite of all of those things in this video. Scott? Dang it. You got <laughs> Yeah, I don't have a lot on this, but you got some of the things I was going to talk about. So I'll talk about the confirmation nods. Quite often when, when someone shakes their head yes, but they're talking about something that should be no, that most people say, ah, they're not being honest because they're saying no as their head shakes yes, but these are confirmation nods. That's what I call them. She's confirming the information she's giving. And they don't come like you're shaking your head. They're not real smooth. They're don't, don't. Don't. They'll be like that. They won't be in, in the perfect space between them all like you would if you were actually saying uh, yes about something. When she talks about the videos, she knows there's a lot of people out there who, under, who are underage and drinking and doing things they shouldn't be doing. And I think that's the reason for the concern we're seeing in her face. And the volume of her voice goes down a little bit there as well. But again, I'm not seeing any um, indicators of deception here at all. She lived fairly close. Is this is this picture correct? It's, she was about twelve miles away. Uh, the Prosser family campground was roughly about twelve miles from her from her yeah, house. Is that correct? That that dot is not exactly where she was located. It's a little bit more to the right and towards the little okay. blue lake that you can see up from it. Um, it was a little bit closer to that lake, but definitely that's about. Yeah, it would have taken about thirty minutes for her. We we found out about approximately 30 minutes for her to drive that way 38 maybe this this is crazy i mean you, you know her being a friend i mean your thoughts on her running away is would she have a reason to run away uh i i'm just i'm just trying to come up with anything that i mean it's just uh, what are your thoughts on that i mean what do you think to be fully honest from what i believe about kylie all ideas are still open in the air but she's not the type of girl to run away she loves people too much and she has too much care in her heart to leave people and not leave a note or talk with one of her friends or something and i she is she is yeah. smart enough to know how this would get out and that people would be worried about her and she's a smart girl she graduated with honors early from high school and yeah. was going to attend college and she had plans for her life and she seemed really happy all right chase what do you got if uh, you think you saw something strange here, which was a deviation uh, from her baseline, I saw it too. She's speaking in past tense about Kylie toward the end of this. This is common, though, when referencing the past descriptions of someone. So what this does, if, I, if you're describing how someone behaved in the past and then trying to describe them, it shifts the mind to think in past tense terms. So this isn't one of the indicators that I would even bat an eye at. So the past tense, if you go back and listen to this, she's shifted into past tense to talk about something that was genuinely past tense. Still descriptive about Kylie using a social measurement tool. And this new measurement here is added about intelligence. But how does she describe the intelligence? It's intelligence that leads her to being more socially aware. So we're seeing all of this stuff. Every positive quality goes back to some kind of social strength. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I'm glad you grabbed that one. It's the one I talked about in the very beginning. Just because she shifted tense means nothing. It's one of those absolutist red flags. It really means nothing in this case. She does that clarifying forehead again when she's asking a question or when he's asking her where the place is and she's like no that's not true she's at counter clarification and says it's there it's closer to that blue lake and she does this thing that might make you think it's a red flag immediately long drawn out to be fully honest what i think about kylie all are still up in the air and then she does but and her butt has exclamation points after if you listen to it for her speech pattern but she's making the point she's not just throwing it away and then there's minor disgust at leaving without a note. All this looks good. It all still fits the story she's telling. All the narration's good. Uh, Mark, what do you got? 
Yep, just two things. Look, just more clarity on the exact location there. I like that you picked up as well her concern that the that somebody has the wrong data. Again, it's it's classic for her now. She gets concerned about people having the wrong data and she likes to put people right and be in charge of that. Very helpful, good leadership there. Just as a generalization, very direct eye contact and very clear, clear and direct. This is not something I'd be expecting from somebody who's trying to uh, put barriers in the way. Clarity and clear eye contact. So all looks good to me. Scott, any differences there? No, nope, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I thought something was interesting about this is her her eye, her blink rate. It really, it really hasn't gone up at all. In some spots where she's talking about this, she'll think it'll blink twice, but that's about it. It's not really, we're not seeing a lot, and I think that's because we're not seeing a lot of stress here. So we're seeing, um, again, back to like Chase was saying, up to her baseline until, and like Greg was saying as well, we get to that part where she starts talking about past tense, but you can completely toss that away because it means absolutely nothing. All right, we good? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's good. Beat that, Mark. Her mom just is destroyed. Um, her, mom is Dean... her, her mom is fully invested in her life. Um, I'm, and I'm... Yeah, so there have been dive teams sent in, and I can pretty much only say they've done thorough, thorough searches through the waters, through the lakes surrounding. They are searching the waters. They are searching the campgrounds and everywhere related na lakes that are near because Boca and Stampede are two reservoirs that are near there as well. And they are doing searches through there every single day. They have been for the past three days. They have done extensive searches to points that you wouldn't yeah. even believe the FBI and those people. Oh, I, they are going. I, I, I'm to be fully honest, my biggest concern is that somebody, and I've said this in other interviews, somebody knew she was drunk, offered to give her a ride home, and they didn't give her a ride home. And they could be across the world at this point with how long she's been gone. And I'm just, I'm worried that I have a feeling, and obviously, I, I don't know, I have a feeling that she is still alive and she's still out there and she's still fighting, but that there's somebody else involved and that's not confirmed that's just what i believe i i think there has to be somebody else involved in this all right mark what do you got yeah so she has a theory and that's important uh chase i don't know whether you were going to bring up the case of the missing perpetrator but in, in this particular moment <coughs> she's willing to offer a perpetrator and and something of a description as to where her theory goes she has a theory she's not in that world of well i you know we just don't know there's no invisible person um so across the world they're now moving her across the world so it's it's kind of a trafficking theory she's got a theory about her getting drunk being taken advantage of now trafficked across the world um and they didn't give her a ride home she says she 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 there is a story about the lift but she didn't get a ride home and the lips show apprehension there uh once again i think there is a sense of uh guilt in here um you know obviously we all un understand it was it was a little bit chaotic there but as much as you can always try and get your friends home in some kind of way but you know you can understand the chaos going on um but she does revert to she's still out there still fighting and so it's interesting she, that she brings back this fighting idea again because that's something that this group do together uh it's it's subversive uh it's about being a teenager in that location uh you 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 fight so uh no missing perpetrator here but chase what, what do you got on this one what do you think yeah i agree with you on that uh, especially on the on that part the, with the perpetrator there's no ambiguity there this is honest behavior the references uh, the care her mother has for Kylie with present tense words. There's genuine baseline for her recall with eye movement and everything. But there's chin boss movement or grief, which we see this muscle tighten up here when somebody experiences grief. 
when she's the moment it's very micro but it's the moment that she starts contemplating some uh, kylie being taken so we're seeing just tons of honesty here greg yeah her brow tips come up in the center just barely but we associate that with sorrow when she's talking about the girl's mother and that's a short snip so you have to look at it very closely she's not nervous there's no breathing increase no blink rate increase or anything about searching the water if you have any doubt if you're thinking the me got it wrong if this girl had put that 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 girl in the water, she would be just beside herself talking about the FBI searching the water, unless she's some steely-eyed, cold-hardened killer, and even they have a hard time with that because they are aware of what's going on. Now, this is us doing it in retrospect, of course. She says, to be fully honest, so it shows up again, this means probably that it's a, a language virus among her peers, and that happens a lot in people in their teens. If you think about your high school years, all those language, all that language that's associated that you had to get out of your head as you moved on to jobs and that kind of thing, it's a different way of, of working. So it's a catchphrase. She's congruent in messaging, even when she's editing. This is a great indicator. If a person's editing in their body language, they're punctuating with their hands and their head when they're changing words and that punctuation stops and starts up again. That's a great indicator that the person's being honest, even though they're editing as they speak because it takes too much effort to do it otherwise. And you get what Scott always talks about, the mismatch between illustrators and words if you don't. Her illustrators and her words match, even though she's editing as she speaks. And then finally, there's disdain in her face when she talks about someone else involved. This is all good. It all means that she's being honest. Scott, what do you get? I agree with you. And I, the part where, where uh, Chase, you're seeing, I think, the grief right there in the chin boss, it is a little bit. But it happens when she starts talking about what she thinks has happened to her. And just before that, we see her shoulders go down. We see defeat at that point. She's You can see her lower down in the seat than she was when we first started. Again, her blink rate is almost nothing here. The first 30 seconds of the video, she, she doesn't blink. So that I thought that was really interesting because that shows she's really relaxed and lets us know that she she believes what she's saying and she's getting ready to, like you were saying, Greg. She's going in and she's editing what she's saying. I call it structuring quite often because she's getting ready to tell us about what she thinks happened to her as she goes through that. And it's, it can get dark when you start thinking about things like that when you get in that position where somebody's missing. And there's all these things you know that could possibly happen. And she's thinking about those things, which she's talked about with her friends, I'm sure. And they've all made their own decisions about what they think have happened. But I, I think that as she goes to that dark place about what might have happened, I think she feels defeated. And somewhere in her heart, she feels like maybe she may not come back. Again, like you were saying, Greg, this is all in retrospect. So we can sit here and say, yeah, this means this and that means that. But we can see things on her face that will tell, tell us that's what that would suggest or indicate as we go through this. Sh uh, Shaney Jones wants to ask you, on your last call, did she let you know who the quote unquote friend was that was driving her home? Yeah, so this is a common misconception. Um, she was not being driven home and she was not driving. So, okay, at the end of the party when she called, when I saw her, I she was supposed to give me a ride home because I had asked her to give me a ride home because I wanted to stay later. I then realized later in the party that I believe she was drunk and I knew she was drunk. And so I did not want her to be driving me home um, because I, you know, I know about drunk drivers and all that. And so... <laughs> I, smart. yeah, and I figured she would be staying there or she would find a ride home because she's a smart girl. She's smart enough to know just she's smart. And so um, then uh, I found her as I was leaving the party. I was making sure to find her to tell her that I had another ride home and that um, I loved her and I want to say bye and for her to have fun at the party. And then when I left the party, we were on we were pretty much on 89 with my ride. And um, she called me as I was in the car in the passenger seat and she was like, hey, uh, where are you? Do you, you still need a ride home? And I was like, no, I'm OK. Like, I'm in the car right now. I'm, dry, I'm like getting driven home now. But Kylie did not have a set ride home. And she, I was under the impression that she would either sleep there or find another ride home. Um, and... I, it was not known that anybody was going to give her a ride home. She was not, when she called me, she was not in a car. I could hear the party and people, many people talking in the background. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is one of those places where the red flags come up. And this is where people probably automatically assume that she was trying to hide something. She probably was some guilt, some feelings of guilt. 
she's 18. You know, she's not 60 and been through combat and all that kind of thing. All of us will have a different mindset about what's rational. And even we will feel guilt when someone we know does something that causes their demise or that they came up missing. She has some great big deviations here. And regardless of whether she's done it before, that immediate um and push her hair behind her ears is a big red flag because it says something has changed. Now, what she's doing is bracing to set the record straight, I think. And then she raises her brow up and she says, I asked her for a ride and then thought she was drunk. Oh, no, knew she was drunk. That's the beginning of it. I think there there's some request for approval. That is not a do you understand what I mean? That is a is it OK? I would poke on in a person in an interrogation room. If she were there, I would poke on her and say, tell me what really happened. I'd start poking until mm -hmm. she told me, look, I felt guilty because then she goes on to say she's a smart girl, smart enough to know. She starts shaking her head. No, when she says that. And then she you can tell when she gets down to the point, she's smart enough to know. You can see that she doesn't even finish the thought. And that's remorse. You can see the remorse there that she trails off and switches to passive voice immediately. I haven't heard a lot of that. She's talking about she didn't have a known ride. I forget the other passive word, but this tells you there's remorse in her whole thinking. And right there, if she were guilty, is when you lean to her, that's what the interrogator would lean in and go, okay, it's okay. Things happen. And that's when you start to get the person into that whole feeling mode. Uh, Chase, what do you got? Yeah, there's genuine grief, uh, right as the video starts because we're picking up at the beginning of this one we're at the end of the last one that we just watched and you can see the genuine grief on the face right as this video starts right after the description in the previous one this is honest behavior throughout the video there's genuine recall uh moving her eyes in the right direction the words the fluency is all there there's descriptive language there's no redirection to her innocence whatsoever and there's genuine concern for the case and not a concern for her innocence and I was going to talk about the grief. Greg, you covered it uh, brilliantly. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I agree. Look, hair back so she can be really clear about this. There is a change of rhythm here because I think there's a build of emotion. There's less buoyancy in the face. Literally, the, the, the muscles start to relax and the face starts to sink down a little bit as there's more sadness around this. I mean, you know, every credit to this young woman who is doing a brilliant job of, of leading this and doing this interview right here. And at the same time, I think the narrative going on in her head is that possibly she abandoned this person and this person has been taken and now she needs to offset some guilt and responsibility around that. And I think therefore she says she's smart enough to, to know we don't hear at the end what she's smart enough to know. So there's something unsaid about what she hopes she's smart enough to know. She's she's smart, okay? And then her eyes roll back slightly. Again, I think there is an offset of responsibility right onto the, the, the victim there to say, I, th I, I think this person would have been good enough to be able to look after themselves in this situation. I hope she's been able to look after herself in the situation. Again, this is, I'm not putting, you know, any blame uh, on this person at all, but I would suspect she is. She is putting some blame in her, in her direction. It's, it's, it's only natural. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? I never thought about that, that, that she probably caught a ride with somebody else or something and, and, she feels guilty about that for for not taking her. I figured it was a fuss or something. So yeah, that's that's interesting. This is the first time we actually see stress though, or any stress that's worth calling out. Because when she starts, she starts talking about her being drunk, instead of her shoulders going up and down, we see that shoulder move forward. Now I'm under the impression that's her hand pulling down on her leg, and she's squeezing her her leg or her knee like that as an adapter. So that's the and that's like you were saying, Greg. And I think that's where you're talking about. That's where I would go in as well and start asking all and just tearing that all apart because she's starting the ums and the the long pauses right in there. And I would I would let her talk for a second. Then I would break that up and get her brain over here thinking about something else, and then scoot back over there every couple of seconds to try to see if she if anything mixes up in there. At, uh, right in that section so that's a that's a good call at that at that section so i i i think this is the first time we're seeing stress 
honor, but I think you're, you, you guys are all right. There's, there's a reason for it. And Mark, yeah, I didn't catch that at all. I didn't think about that. That's good. I didn't think about that being a situation where she was feeling guilty about that. It's Kylie just, just by the way, but if Kylie's out there watching I'm this, sorry, Kylie, I meant, yeah. I apologize. I, no I'm, I just, my mind's going a thousand miles an hour. It's just, this is very emotional, yeah. but no, I'm sorry, Kylie. Thank Kylie. you. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's totally fine. Um, if Kylie were out here watching this, I would just want to know we are doing everything to try and find her. We are contacting, we are making this go worldwide. We will find her. We will find what is happening and we just want her home. We don't want to get anybody in trouble. We don't, we just want her home. We, we love her and we would do anything to see her again. I personally, I just want to drink a boba with her again and laugh and tell the story. And when I see her, I'm going to absolutely tackle her to the ground, but I'm going to give her the most love that she's ever felt. And I hope she knows she's loved. This whole community is looking for her. The whole world at this point is looking for Kylie. Kylie, if, if, if you're out there and you can hear this, please fight. Keep fighting. Don't give up. We are coming. We are working. We will not stop working. I will stay up day and night. I have her completely. We want you home. We just want you home. And yeah. All right, Chase, what do you got? Right here, she's comfortable with her imagined scenario. She's not trying to say there was a kidnapper. Then maybe she ran away. Then maybe somebody convinced her to leave or all these other scenarios that guilty people are very, very comfortable introducing and injecting multiple pathways and all kinds of ambiguity here. She's comfortable with a lack of ambiguity. This is the precise moment in a guilty person. You're going to see a spike in variability of circumstances where somebody would be offering up several different reasons for scenarios for what happened. You're seeing precisely the opposite of this here, in my opinion, with no deception markers whatsoever. Mark? Yeah, just some interesting ones about, about when she sees us, she's a taller to the ground. An interesting society there where, where fights are love. Love is having having a fight. It makes sense of uh, you know, putting the gloves on and and fighting it out between between friends. Kind of interesting, I just think that that's that's the kind of knockabout uh, group that these kids uh, are. And wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great to, to have friends like her because she is, you know, such a strong, clear leader at this point um, and also sending a message at the same time out to her idea of the potential kidnappers, uh, the person, people in her mind who've taken uh, her friend, which is I don't want to get any anybody into trouble. It's going to be all right if you give her, if you give her back, we'll just forget about it all, which is a great tactic. Not yeah. that it's going to work every time but it's a really good tactic that she's putting out there so a message here that she's not only doing to a friend out there in the hope that she could be uh watching her in this imagined idea that the kidnapper has set her up with a tv and but i mean that's always the internal hope i think of, of here's what i'd say if i if i thought my my friend friend was there so there's the message there to the friend there's a message there to the public that we're out there looking and a message there to the perpetrator going, look, just give her back and we'll just forget about it all and walk away and nobody will be in any trouble. All wrapped up in a slow burning emotion rather than one that, that we, we'd often see uh, in somebody who has some strong guilt around this where you'll see these spikes of emotion that kind of come out of nowhere and disappear or appear in a very unfluid way but come in a spiky way i'm not seeing any of that I'm very happy with what i'm seeing there uh, scott what do you got on this one all right and chase the opposite of what you're talking about is when you go into uh, a bank and you're talking to people, there's somebody in the bank is taking something. They're there is getting into the lock boxes or getting into something in the back. And it's locked and you can't get in, right? Supposedly nobody's supposed to get in. And you'll as you talk to those people, as you weed down who you think is the guilty person, you'll talk to two or three people and they'll see you'll talk to one and you'll say, So is there, how would you get into the any idea how you get into that room back there? What do you do? It's no earthly idea. 
No, I, they've got things set up so you can't get in. They'll give all these reasons you can't get in. But then you'll talk to the next two or three people. Every one of them will say, when you say, is there any way you can get back in a room? How do you do that? Oh, yeah, here's how I do it. I go through here and I do that and flip that little thing. There's a button under there. We all know it. We all do it. So just the opposite of what you're talking about is when they, when the guilty person says, no, there's no way to get in. And what you're saying is there's all these other things for the innocent person. So that makes, that makes total sense. I think this goes right along with her baseline here as well. Everything we've seen because she's still, she's kind of loping, but she's stopping and she's thinking and structuring what she's going to say, but she's still getting all of her points across. And she's, I, I think, as a group of girls, they'll talk about, oh, when we see her again, uh, you know, I love her so much, I'm going to do this or that. I think that's what you're talking about, Mark, when they're when they're going to tackle them and stuff. Of course, we're talking about somebody who goes to parties where they have boxing. So I, I think naturally they're going to be a little bit more aggressive in that world, uh, you know, talking about that. But I think everything looks as it should for someone who didn't do something they shouldn't have. Or, yeah, I think that's right. If that makes sense. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I don't think um, I, I know people who would turf each other, too, in, in as a sign of affection. So I get it, I, especially for his alcohol involved. So I have a few friends who might do that as well. What's interesting is she corrects this interviewer about the name of Kylie. And you can see a nervous kind of a smile, a polite smile as she does it. But she's happy to correct that person's name. Here's another thing. When, when she's talking about her. Her, all of her pronouns, all of her tenses and everything are lined up. She's talking about her. If she, if we were talking to her, we would say, boom, boom, boom. Then she goes to talking to her and all of her pronouns, all of her conjugation, everything lines up. The message is clear. A person who is trying to deliver a message that they're trying to look hopeful is not going to go very well there. Then she gets buoyant, buoyant. And she shifts at we will in the future. And she talks about positive things and seeing each other again. A person who probably had killed her or had something to do with her disappearance likely wouldn't be that buoyant about that. We've seen a lot of them. Go back and look at some of them. It looks consistent. It hits her baseline and it flows in sentence structure and everything in a way that makes me believe it. Are there red flags through some of the other things? Maybe, but none in here. All right. Well, let's throw it around the room one time and talk about what we think we've seen 30 seconds or less. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, though there are some red flags in there. You want to make sure that you're thinking about them in the right context. And the right context makes them right for this situation. Great video in terms of what truth looks like. Chase? Yeah, people ask us all the time, why don't you get a video analysis of somebody who's honest? This is it. And this is what honesty looks like. I think all of us have at least 20,000 plus hours doing this stuff. This is honesty. It's great. Yeah, baseline is different dependent on the situation. When you're sitting on your couch eating Cheetos, you're going to be much more relaxed than you are when you're in front of a camera. This woman is showing all of the signs of being honest, but under duress. Scott. Exactly. I agree with all you guys. We're seeing a great example of someone's baseline that we got to first. As we go through, it doesn't change much. But in sections where it gets emotional, it does change, but for the right reasons. So again, like you guys were saying, this is a great example of seeing someone who's innocent and being innocent and not being in trouble for anything. So, all right, thanks for the good one, fellas, and we'll see you next time. So what do you got?